Welcome to another informative webinar in C-Store's TechWise series. Today's event featuring Commvault, Hyperscale Software. Our guest speaker today, Usman Kareem, Sales Engineer with Commvault, and Chris Krieger will be joining us from C-Store as well. My name is Kim. I'm your webinar organizer for today. And I want to take a quick moment to point out a few helps to ensure you have a great experience. First, you should have a control panel on the right side of your screen. You can minimize or maximize that with the orange arrow. Second, we'll take as many questions at the end of today's session as time allows. Be sure to post them to the questions pane at any time. Finally, no need to take notes as today's session is recorded and we'll share the recording link with everyone following. Take it away. Thank you very much, Kim. I appreciate everyone taking time this morning. Welcome to a, uh, another session of uh, CSOR TechWise. I think you'll uh, you'll enjoy the the topic today as well as the speaker. Um, a brief bit about C Store before we get you over to our speaker. Um, C Store has been around since 2002. Since then, we have helped all of our clients uh, across Arizona and North America um, improve their situation. We focus on data protection. Um, we have uh, accomplished quite a bit as a company and with our clients. And um, we always put our clients first. That is what keeps clients coming back to us. That's our belief is is, um, is doing the right thing by the client. Um, we have came up with a, a slogan that we believe with internally. It's why we exist and why we exist is to put people on path to success. That includes clients, employees, and our partners. Um, we believe in the powers of our, of our minds, working together as a team. We hire folks with great heart and soul and we enable and empower them to do the right thing as they move forward and work with our partners and clients and community. Some of the main areas of focus for us as a company are digital transformation, cloud is another way to think about that, cybersecurity, and data center solutions. Through those areas, the most compelling reason why clients choose us and stick with us is the people we bring to the table, our services. And on the screen, you'll see a summary of some of the many areas that we focus on, ranging from cloud, consulting and optimization, staff augmentation, managed services, as well as data migration. There are many technologies that we use and keep in our toolbox to make sure we do the right thing for our clients. Uh, some of those are listed here. There are many, many more um, that we do use and have experience and expertise with. And with that, I'm very happy to uh, introduce a colleague and a friend, uh, Usman Karim. We've worked together for well over a decade, and uh, I think that uh, his clients, and I definitely would agree that he's got a lot of value to bring to the table and knows his topic. So without further ado, Usman, I turn it over to you, my good man. Thank you very much, Chris. As always, it's truly a pleasure to work with C-Store. Um, again, my name is Usman Karim. I am a systems or sales engineer for Commvault Systems. Um, a little bit about myself before we jump into the topic for today, which is how to scale out your infrastructure or um, solve your secondary storage headaches with hyperscale. Um, I have been in this particular position for well over a decade dealing with data management or data issues for for a very, very long time. And like Chris said, um, I'm truly honored to, to work with C-Store. As a former customer of C-Store, um, I can attest to everything Chris has said. Um, they do believe in the people and they find the right technologies to put people on the path to success. I am a walking testament of that. So, you know, first of all, I'd like to thank Chris and C-Store um, for allowing us to, to be a part of this webinar today. What we've known and everyone has realized over the past uh, five years, the enterprise continues to shift. This is one of the reasons I love being in IT. The constant change, the constant learning, the constant ability to be able to um, make improvements for uh, customers and organizations um, to, to lower their costs, to make things a little bit more efficient, um, to, to drive profits. This is part of you know what we as solutions engineers and sales engineers are trained to do. We all understand the traditional architecture. There's always some type of storage, network, compute, and memory component for uh, the current IT infrastructure. However, with the transformation of what we've seen through other, other applications and other platforms, namely cloud, many organizations want that flexibility. They want that agility. 
And what they're finding is, is the traditional architecture and infrastructure really limits and challenges how they can actually respond to their customer needs and their customer uh, demands. So why Conwalk Hyperscale Software? So the Hyperscale, hyperscale Scale-Out Software is basically technology that we've developed to provide those features and functionalities that I've just talked about earlier. What does it provide? Some simplification and automation, reducing the amount of human error that we have in the day-to-day -day basis um, from simple tasks of running reoccurring backups or running reports that allow you to be able to alert and share information with your help desk team or your cybersecurity team to alert you of certain types of events with inside your infrastructure. But also provide you a simple single management framework that's easy to use, understand, and consume as a customer. False overall goal. We're trying to drive some type of outcome, positive outcome for our customers. And enterprises using the hyperscale technology to lower your costs and accelerate your ability to be able to respond to your customers along with the automation orchestration, minimizing the errors, human errors that you run, to, run into on a daily basis. Um, having well-defined SLAs, ultimately providing some type of um, cloud first business objective for many organizations who are out there looking to achieve the goals of simplification. Us who've dealt with Convault before or any type of backup technology, there's a few fundamental components that exist within that type of architecture. One is there's always going to be some type of master server or, you know, control node that controls and manages the entire environment. Typically, there's some type of media agent or media server that's going to manage the movement of the data. And lastly, there's going to be uh, the client agent, things that's going to move the data from a server, a NAS file, or an application to the, the media that, that you intend to write to, whether it's tape, disk, cloud. Along with the, the media server, there's also things that's put in place policies that allow you to be able to manage uh, the data effectively. How long do you want to keep data in site A for a specific period of time while being able to manage archives and secondary locations for a different period of time? So what has Convault really done? We said no more media agents. Let's get rid of this because it actually lends to that traditional architecture of, of the past. One of the true benefits that I've had the, the pleasure of actually um, dealing with myself being in life sciences or pharmaceutical industries for more than a decade, the traditional architecture lends for certain types of problems. And the problems is anytime you have to go through a FDA validated process, a lot of organizations look at that as a very costly expense because of the amount of paperwork, time, and resources required to be able to achieve simple tasks such as upgrading a server or upgrading an application or moving it to new storage. Um, so many of those organizations elect to do nothing versus actually putting the energy and, and resources into to going through the upgrade. What Hyperscale does is we remove those barriers we commoditize the hardware. We commoditize the process. We allow you the freedom to be able to take a new approach to being able to solve your backup issues. So what have we done? From the enterprise, this is a real world scenario. In the current architecture, we're able to scale very, very scale in very, very large environments. 10,000 clients, you know, one and a half petabytes of front end data over 66 petabytes in disk pools. And as you can see, this is a massive environment. And as you see, a lot of moving parts and a lot of areas that can cause <clears throat> complication or headaches or challenges for any IT organization to be able to move data, upgrade systems, um, change processes, 
just because of the complexity of this environment. Uh, as you can see, Commvault is one of the enterprise applications for data protection and data management. So let's get to it. What are the key capabilities? Lower cost of infrastructure. Commoditizing the, the hardware. One of the things Commvault is very, very proud of and very happy that we can do is allow customers the freedom to select the hardware that they like, that they choose, that they can actually negotiate lower, lower costs for their organization. However, still getting the benefit of having a very flexible, um, scalable architecture. Deploy within 30 minutes. Yesterday we were on, uh, I actually did a deployment for an appliance and literally it took me about 30 minutes. So we are proving that this stuff can be up and running in a very, very short period of time, which the key capabilities and benefits for your customers is you don't have to spend the time and the resources trying to manage a deployment. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in depth coming up. Of the resiliency and reliability. Some of the traditional architectures have single points of failure, whether it's network, whether it's uh, CPU, whether it's disk, um, even with the traditional RAID, one server can go down and affect um, your entire organization. With hyperscale, all the data is distributed across all the nodes. And providing the resiliency, you can lose one node, one drive, or two drives based on the resiliency level you select. Commvault as a feature-rich application still provides all the, the standard feature sets that customers need, deduplication, indexing, replication, versioning, live mount, which is definitely a capability that many of our competitors don't, don't offer. Live mount is the feature of being able to bring up a virtual machine out of the backup set and or database or other applications without having to move that information into production. For testing in DR, this is a great case. Um, <clears throat> encryption and high availability. So architecturally, in some, some hyperscale instances, you have control nodes and data nodes. With Commvault, we basically created an architecture or configuration for just control nodes. And you'll see that we don't necessarily need a data node um, to be able to achieve the resiliency and capabilities for a hyperscale architecture. As mentioned before, we partner with a lot of different companies. So you, as an organization can choose what's best for you. If you're a Cisco UCS shop, you know, you can also use this in a reference architecture. If you're HP shop, if you're Dell EMC, and of course we're looking at other, other manufacturers as well. The Apollo series and micro, super micros. Also, if you build your own white boxes, we'll provide the specs and you can use the software to provide the exact same resiliency um, based on the hardware that you like or you choose. We like to say start small. Typically, when we deploy hyperscale, it's in one or two configurations, either a three node block or a six node block. Again, start small, get comfortable with it. Deploy a three node block. And then if you wanna add on more blocks or more nodes, it's as simple as going into the GUI and adding them. The sizing charts, as you can see, we have tremendous amount of capabilities to be able to size um, enormous um, enterprise environments. But also, even if you need smaller environments, as you can see, we started with six terabyte drives. We have four terabyte drives as well, which would get you up to 120 terabytes of raw capacity but also we're working on coming out with the 12 terabyte drive. So we're starting to get a lot denser for the form factors and the uh, servers in which you can deploy or nodes you can deploy. We're talking about delivering um, simplicity with the scale out. Talked about it a little bit earlier. It's real simple. 
you know, log into the GUI, run the script. It basically goes and configures all your nodes, calls it a day. We're done. You can also do this with reference architectures. Once you've done that, you log into the, the admin console and you select um, the, the pool that you want to use along with building the policies. So we want to take a look at the traditional model. If we use the example from earlier, the 1.5 petabytes of data that we're protecting, a lot of moving parts, storage vendors, raid groups, multipathing, um, network, server groups that you have to deal with from installing OS and patches, um, mounting those specific uh, paths to that storage, configuring the software, dealing with your networking team. It's a multi-day effort. But what if you could take this exact same infrastructure in this enterprise and get it done in a short period of time? From bare metal, you'll mount the ISO, install it on the node, the node will configure the rest of the nodes along with the storage, provision it, provision and configure the networks, register it to your comp serve if it's an existing customer, and five minutes later, you're in the application starting your backups. So in about 30 minutes, you can actually start protecting data in your organization. Of course, reducing the time that it takes for an administrator and or organization to prepare the environment, install it, and configure it. So with our web-based UI, we've made it very, very simple for customers. Once the storage pools have been created, the pools will basically say your nodes are online, Here's how much available um, disk space you have. It creates the deduplication across all the nodes. And you can go and start to, to consume that storage. Commvault is a policy-driven application. So we allow you to be able to create the policies that match the needs of your environment. Again, the example we have here is a gold plan, and we've decided to retain this data for more than for 30 days. The schedules are automatically generated to ensure that the data that we're protecting uh, within that plan has a 30-day retention. You can also elect to move this to an individual storage platform or some other configuration from a storage target. You don't necessarily always have to write to a hyperscale pool, but you can also write to a cloud target, AWS, Azure, uh, Google Cloud, or Rackspace, any type of S3 uh, compatible uh, cloud provider. We can actually write to that as well. So what are we trying to do? What are we saying with Convault Hyperscale? there's an extreme amount of resiliency and processing for customers moving small amounts of data to large amounts of data. Again, the pools have been um, created using erasure coding, which is a software, for lack of a better term, a software RAID. So now the software layer controls where the data is sitting within the nodes. This gives us the flexibility to be able to lose um, one or two nodes because of the high, the erasure coding. With that, we don't sacrifice the performance. We have the capability to move up to about nine terabytes a node per hour. That's a massive amount of data. Deduplication, um, minimizing the amount, the amount of data that's actually written to disk by utilizing deduplication. And that, that also helps improve the performance when moving data across large networks. We've enhanced our software to make sure that it protects itself. So at any point in time, you always have the ability to be able to recover a specific object and or group of objects 
um, even in the event of a failure. And last but not least, the enterprise framework, uh, management framework. Regardless if you're a shop of 10 terabytes or two petabytes, the interface and the framework will be the same, allowing customers and IT administrators to be able to share the exact same interface, however, have a separate look and feel for the reasons of security and separation. So in summary, why do you want to look at Commvault Hyperscale? It's simple, it's easy, it's available, it's scalable, and all of the connections to the cloud are native. What do I mean by native? Out of the box, we don't need gateways to connect to AWS or Azure. It's just a simple configuration. As long as you have all your security keys and you have access to write to the storage for the cloud provider, it's something that's already built in. Short time to deployment, and we're reducing the complexity to implement either a small, mid-sized, or large deployment. So with the hyperscale technology, there is no breadth of, of application support. From the virtual environment, we support pretty much everything, and every day we support more and more. Um, we add to the uh, supported manufacturers list. As you can see, endpoints, applications, databases. Um, we also support a myriad of storage hardware providers from the perspective of being able to read, write, and manage some of their snapshots. Also, um, large files and big data. Greenplum, IBM GPFS, Hadoop, we can also manage, manage and protect all of that data under one platform. And last but not least, we've been making massive improvements on our SaaS and cloud connectivity and protection. If you don't know, so today we can actually protect Google Drive and Microsoft OneDrive, also O365Salesforce.com, and other SaaS applications are coming online every day. We feel that we're the best in the industry. We do our best to be able to work with other manufacturers to provide best-in-class solutions for our customers and partners. So the hyperscale software for backups. It's gonna extend the data center transformation process very, very fast. We talked about it earlier, having to go from a multi-day deployment to down, literally down to hours or minutes. What's the fit? You know, if you have 90 terabytes or less, again, we could talk about starting small using the three node block. If it's larger than 90 terabytes, you know, let's look at, uh, you know, a reference architecture that can, can handle more, more data and process more information much faster. And with that, I will now open it up for questions. Excellent. Thank you so much, Usman. Great session. Great information and very timely. At this time, we'll open it up for questions. As a reminder, if you have any, please post them to the questions pane in your GoToWebinar control panel. We do have a couple of questions for you, Usman, just coming in now. Uh, question one, can you implement hyperscale technology into a current Commvault environment? That is a great question. And the answer is yes. Because of the architecture has changed from a traditional, what we call scale-up model, the media agent, storage systems, um, servers, you can run the hyperscale technology simultaneously and still see little impact. So you can actually mix and match um, the, the two different technologies. And as you migrate, you can migrate off of your older technology 
to provide more simplification in your in your uh, environment simply by um, altering some of the policies to be able to move data from the old uh, traditional model to the new model. Excellent. A couple more questions coming in. Can you use a white box to install the hyperscale technology? Again, another great, great question. Um, I alluded to earlier that Commvault allows you to be as flexible um, as possible with all of your hardware manufacturers. And we've, we've seen across the enterprise where customers want to take advantage of systems that they've built themselves. And we do allow customers to be able to do that. What we do in those cases is provide them the specifications, specifications, memory, CPU, um, uh, performance recommendations or the, the IOPS per drive that we require and request. And they can actually use that to install uh, the hyperscale software and get the resiliency that they're looking for. Excellent. Uh, another question, it sounds like maybe there's some skeptics out there. Maybe you can talk a little bit more to this about the deployment time. Is deployment time really 30 minutes? So I know you gave an example on that. Maybe you can talk to some of the ranges of deployment times. Uh, like I said, maybe some, some skeptics out there on, on that. Uh, well, we love skeptics. Um, I love to be <laughs> challenged on it. Uh, anytime there's a new technology that comes out or a technology rebirth, uh, there's going to be skeptics, internal and external. And I'll admit I was one of them. Um, part of this process is uh, I looked at it and it says, nah, no way. This is impossible. You can't deploy this in, in 30 minutes. I've been doing this for, you know, 20 plus years. This is, this is impossible. I've never seen it happen. They provided me the box and some instructions that says, hey, follow the instructions. And, and I can attest 30 minutes later, you know, the, the software, the box was installed or the hyperscale was installed. Um, the interface was there and I was backing up data within the hour. Now, the only caveat to that is I was doing it on a very small scale. I did about 30 terabytes. If your environment is much larger, you know, I'm not going to say it's going to take 30 minutes, but it's definitely not a multi-day um, effort. It might take you a few more hours if your environment is, you know, 20 petabytes. Um, you know, so so that time is respective, but for small organizations that's up to you know, that 90 terabyte range, uh, yeah, 30 minutes. Fabulous, that, that definitely helps, I think, put it in context, certainly. Uh, one other question, can you mix and match sizes? I assume you know what that means by sizes. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I take the sizes as, as the nodes. Um, yep. so, so again, you know, the sizing chart pointed out that you can have four terabytes, six terabytes, 10 and 12 terabyte drives. Um, yes, you can. So if you start off with uh, um, a node configuration that has uh, 100 terabytes in it, however, the, the remote site only needs 30, 30 or 40 terabytes, yes, you can mix and match the nodes. And in some instances, you can mix and match the boxes, the nodes themselves. So you can actually mix and match blocks, but you can also mix and match nodes in certain, under certain conditions. Fabulous. That actually concludes our questions for today. Thank you so much, Usman, for the great information and to everyone for your time and attention. Uh, before we close today's event, I did want to pass it back to Chris Krieger for a few closing thoughts. Chris? Thank you very much, Kim. And Usman, great job. As always, I appreciate uh, your experience and the info on the presentation. Um, for everyone listening, for more information about the content we presented today or C-Store events or about what we could potentially do for you and your organization, um, by all means, get in touch with us on social media. You see all the logos there, pretty much all the major avenues. Um, you can register and watch some of our information through monthly, monthly uh, news and event bulletins. You can get them at your email. You can speak with us live, and the phone number is there. So there's many ways to get a hold of us uh, if you'd like to. And with that, we will close out. We greatly appreciate everyone taking time uh, with us today, and we hope that we've been able to bring you some good information in this uh, uh, session of uh, C-Store TechWise. I hope everyone has a great day and enjoys the rest of the week. Thank you. Thanks so much, Chris, and thanks again to Usman. And once again, we'd like to thank our, thank our expert speaker, Usman from Commvault, and to everyone for taking time out of your day to join us.
We hope to see you on a future C-Store event very soon. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Thank you.